Hey, aloha, and welcome to Stan Energy Man. Stan Osterman here at ThinkTech Hawaii, where we're trying to keep you up to speed on all things energy, especially hydrogen. And we're still getting used to our new studio, so we'll uh, keep on pressing. But uh, we got Mike Stritsky, and uh, he's been on before a couple times, actually. And uh, he brings to us a lot of information from across the U.S. Uh, he keeps his finger not only on the pulse, but he actually lives the hydrogen world from the hydrogen house in New Jersey. And then uh, he's, he goes coast to coast. He's working in California on another hydrogen house set up. And uh, he's going to give us an update on those. And then we're going to talk about, uh, I'd like to kind of talk mostly about transportation and cars because a lot of people still don't realize how fast hydrogen is becoming ubiquitous here on the planet, and which is a good thing. But uh, it's below most people's radar. It certainly isn't on the news because all they're talking about is impeachment and elections and you know, nonsense like that, which uh, really isn't important compared to hydrogen. But um, we'll try and bring you up to speed. So, Mike, thanks for joining us today all the way from California this time. And uh, we appreciate you calling in. Yeah, no problem, Stan. It's good to hear from you, as always. Um, you know, this has been a, um, a big couple of weeks for hydrogen with the amount of interest that's going on. Um, in the Northeast now, they're just getting ready to open the hydrogen stations there. Um, they're going to soon to have the approval for the tunnels. So uh, that's going to be some big news, and everything else is going to follow from there. There are five stations in um, uh, New England up in Massachusetts that are ready to open, and there are uh, a number of other ones that are getting ready to open in New York State. So the hydrogen economy is getting accepted um, worldwide now. They for the first time in a long time, the um, Department of Energy has actually doubled the funding for hydrogen. Um, and in all sectors, everything from outreach to, you know, new, less expensive tanks, uh, better, cheaper electrolyzers, things like that. Um, Industry is making some, some crazy investments. So you're seeing uh, a lot of major companies investing. Uh, I was at uh, the hydrogen um uh, HTAC meeting in uh, Long Beach uh, a couple of months back, and, uh, you know, we had a presentation from Microsoft that the next cloud is going to be uh, powered by hydrogen, which is the equivalent of two nuclear power plants. And that was really eye-opening. Uh, a few weeks after that, they're announcing that uh, the next power station built in California is going to run on hydrogen. You have Air Liquide basically saying they just got approved for the, um, the uh, power from renewable in Nevada for the, a liquid hydrogen station. So we're going to have one of our first liquid hydrogen refueling stations made off of solar uh, within the next year or so. So infrastructure, which is the last piece that makes this thing work, um, there are a lot of people working on this, and, you know, it's going to happen very shortly. Um, so you're seeing fuel cells and everything from boats and planes um, I built a hydrogen-powered fire truck for Peugeot in France a number of years back, and they just put out a grant for hydrogen fuel cells for emergency vehicles, you know, which makes a lot of sense. So, you know, I'm sitting back in real time. There's not a day goes by that something to do with hydrogen is not here. The Olympics are going to be powered by hydrogen in Japan, and Toyota is already doing a city in Japan powered by hydrogen. Now, you got to remember, Toyota's betting the farm on this technology. They released 5,500 patents free to the world. And then the president of Toyota says that fuel cells within the next year will be cheaper than the Toyota Corolla motors that they're producing today. And that's because of graphene and non-noble metal catalysts. So that's the game changer for both the electrolyzers and the fuel cells. So all of this stuff is happening in real time. This trip out here to California, I'm going to pay a visit to the uh, Tesla factory where they're uh, putting together the prototype trucks and the first refueling stations, you know, for their uh, large orders from the majors for um, hydrogen trucks. These trucks will do 600 miles. They've got about 250 kilowatts, and they'll fill up in about 15 minutes. This is absolute game changers as far as transportation goes when all you're going to be making is water. So, you know, it's, it's every flavor, and now we're seeing a lot of the major companies all investing in hydrogen. We saw Hydrogenics 
um, just got bought from uh, Cummings Diesel. So a lot of these engine companies are seeing that the next uh, generation of their product is going to be fuel cells. They're fast approaching the point where they can't meet the, the uh, emissions regulations any longer. So this is the only thing that's left on the table. And, you know, this technology does have the potential to turn the ship around and go the other way. The greenhouse gas emissions are divided by 54% for transportation and 46% for um, industry, households, homes, things like that. By adopting fuel cell technology, we can eliminate that number down to zero. And since hydrogen is 80% of every molecule in the universe, it can be made from everything, including us. So there are more people jumping on the bandwagon every day, and there's more research money, and there's more awareness happening. Um, it can't happen fast enough, as far as I'm concerned. Over the last 30 years, I knew this was the answer then. Too bad we didn't do something about it 30 years ago, but... It's, I'm just glad we're doing something about it now. Uh, you know, island nations like Hawaii, this is critical. Nobody's coming to rescue you 5,000 miles out in the ocean. You know, and you're, you get all that sunshine, and you have, you have a nice water supply. This fits in perfectly with what everybody else is doing. You're starting to sound uh, like me, right? We just have to have a will to do it. Pardon me? You're starting to sound like me. Uh, well, you know, you've lived it this long. You know, uh, I'm actually seeing, you know, the fruits of all my labor for all these years. You know, so you we something. need to cure the disease, not treat it. But you mentioned something early about um, the New York uh, fueling stations coming online and the East Coast. You know, the East Coast folks have been working like you on hydrogen for a long time. But, you know, people forget that the infrastructure isn't just the fueling stations or the cars and, you know, you know, production of high, maybe liquid hydrogen, but... You mentioned tunnels, you know, getting approval from municipalities to go through tunnels with hydrogen, which is, you know, something they've never had to deal with before, they think. And and it just becomes well, this is, a nightmare. Yeah, this is an educational thing. So think about it this way. You know, they allow natural gas vehicles to go in and out of the tunnels every day, buses and everything. As far as the amount of energy that you're carrying and the safety of it, it's much safer to carry hydrogen. I hear you. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we let things more dangerous go through the tunnel, tunnel like gasoline vehicles, natural gas vehicles, diesel, all of those. But how long so has that really issue been rolling around? How long has that issue been rolling around with the state of New York to get it approved to go through those tunnels? It's got to be at least four or five years, I would think. Uh, at least, you know. Like I said, you know, governments are slow to adopt new technologies until they figure out the tax base. Yeah. You know, right now, yeah. fossil fuel pays for a lot of taxes. So they're, they're, they're not going to let you get hydrogen unless they figure out how to tax it. I think you've just In hit on the case, crux of the problem. You've you hit, the, hit to the crux of the problem, you know, and, unless people can make money off of it. Now, industry's figured out how to make money on hydrogen, but the governments haven't, so... They can talk about greenhouse gases and climate change all they want, but they ain't helping anything until they start helping the hydrogen get, you know, get going. And uh, I think it's time that the legislature uh, in Hawaii and, and the legislatures in all the cities and counties and states around the U.S. start to get a clue that they're in this game whether they want to be or not because it's coming. And they can either start figuring out how to do safety checks, how to standardize uh, measure, units of measure for dispensing hydrogen, how to get things through tunnels and and everything else that comes with hydrogen because it's coming. And uh, you and I have talked yeah, about this still, offline. Still, yeah, I mean, still most of the population thinks the fuel cell is a gas tank. They exactly. have no idea that it exists or it's on the menu. I mean, if you don't know something's on the menu, you can't order it. And that's the way they've kept it for years. You know, we've got to now let people know that there's something else on the menu. We have to let people know that there's a cure for the disease, not just the treatment. We're, we're at the point right now where we don't have any other elements left on the periodic table. And hydrogen solves, you know, the, it cures the disease. It's not the treatment. So, you know, we're at the turning point right now and Toyota's got the whole company on this. So, you know, people bigger than me are, you know, are betting it all. They're putting it all on the green, you know, and 
All we can do is keep moving the same way. In order for this to happen, the equation is simple. You have to people let people know it's on the menu, and people need to vote with their checkbook. You want a cleaner planet, you've got to buy things that are cleaner than what you've got. So, I mean, the solution is simple. The rest will follow. They'll figure all the rest out once capitalism kicks in. Yeah, and I think to add to that, you've got to start telling the manufacturers you demand the product because... You know, we had you sent me the the, the uh, conversion kit for our gem uh, vehicle. The kids, the high school kids, and I converted the vehicle. One of their learning points was when they went to visit the the salespeople that sold us the vehicle because they were it was a full spectrum education for them. They were talking to the people that run the dealership, and the guys that ran the dealership said, "Look, if people don't ask for it, we don't order it." So, you as consumers, besides voting with your checkbook. You gotta let people know that you want hydrogen vehicles, you want Toyota Mirai's, you want the the uh, Hyundai um, Nexo and the, uh, the the other the bigger the vehicle, the Clarity they got in, you know, and Honda has a Clarity and and uh, you know there's other vehicles coming out. Uh, Hummer just announced during the Super Bowl they're doing an electric Hummer. You know, hey, if you got an electric Hummer, there's a hydrogen Hummer right behind it. You know, you gotta ask for those things. Well, yeah, people don't realize that. Fuel cell vehicles are electric vehicles. Exactly. The only difference is instead of using batteries that go dead in five years and have less and less charge every cycle, you put out the same amount of power for 25 years and you generate uh, 12 gallons of drinking water every tank one. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, plus the car is recycled. Yeah, we. That lithium ion batteries very much. It's a it's a constant uh, education process for us. You're right. I tell people that, you know, and by the way, HCAP, my former uh, office, I think they're going to be competing on that emergency vehicle grant. Um, they wanted the Air Force and, the, and HCAP, I think, want to build that. And, um, you know, that's that's an important factor. You know, the guys building these vehicles have have got it down now. Like you said, Toyota's refined the, the patents and everything and the technology down to, uh, you know, one atom thick technology. And as long as you get the right mix of battery with fuel cell, you know, I mean, all electric vehicles are going to have some battery, but trust me, you're a lot better off to have smaller battery and larger fuel cell than large battery and small fuel cell. Yeah, I mean, me and you know that from all the things that we built, and the technology is getting better. I see batteries going away entirely once ultra capacitors come up to speed. Exactly. You know, that's really the ultimate battery. You've got 18 million cycles on an ultra capacitor. So, you know, you've got to use the right technology, you know, and the more people use it, the more cost effective it's going to get. Yeah. So, you know, we're doing homes up in Grass Valley right now here in California because the utility is failing. So they found out when they get prices for batteries that it's much cheaper to store the kilowatt hours in hydrogen than it is to store it in batteries. And they, they have subsidies here in, in California for uh, being your own grid and for grid storage. We also have the same thing in New Jersey. So just like solar, they're starting to put in incentives for people to buy the technology. So right now, if you wanted to do hydrogen fuel cell rather than batteries, the government's going to pay for it. Yeah. Great deal, right? You know, well, people just have to know it's on the menu. Yep. Hey, Mike, we're uh, at break time. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back in 60 seconds with Mike Stritsky uh, talking to us from uh, California. Um, usually we have to do a five-hour, six-hour time difference on New Jersey, but we got him for two hours. We got him a little cheap this, this time. So we'll be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. 
We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Hey, welcome back. Stan Energy Man here, Stan Osterman, and we're talking to Mike Stritsky over in California. And uh, before we get started back talking to Mike, I want to show a quick video that Mike sent us. It's one of a couple that we'd we like to get on the air here if we can. And uh, we're going to show you this one because it just gives you a taste of uh, how committed some of the bigger companies are to hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and hydrogen technology. This home in a Manhattan suburb is a model for hydrogen adoption. It is North America's first solar hydrogen powered residence. The brainchild of inventor Mike Stritsky, the hydrogen house project uses a solar powered electrolyzer to split water molecules, storing the hydrogen in repurposed propane tanks. Using a fuel cell, it converts hydrogen into electricity that powers the home. The only emissions are oxygen and water. Stritsky is also committed to using the clean fuel in other applications to achieve a carbon-free society. Fiumnay is committed to realizing a hydrogen-powered future because of you. So Mike, we're back on the air. I've got, uh, okay. you know, that, that's, you know, that's a great video from Hyundai. And it reminds me of some of Toyota's early videos from their CEO talking about their company's commitment to a clean future. And Japan certainly has uh, led the way and they're going to show it this summer in the Summer Olympics, as you mentioned earlier. And Hyundai, I think as well, I think um, Korea is going to be doing one of the Olympics, I think in two years or next year. Um, and I think their plan is to do the same thing Japan's doing this year. So what are, have you ever driven any of the Hyundai vehicles? I've driven their larger one. What, what is that, the Tucson or? Yeah, they had a Tucson at one point and now it's the uh, Nexo. Okay, I've driven the Tucson and actually I was really impressed with that vehicle. It's, it was the only SUV type vehicle that um, they had out there for the test drive. And uh, Toyota mm -hmm. had one of their forerunners, I think, um, converted earlier. So there's some people who have driven that, but that um, that Hyundai um, SUV with a hydrogen fuel cell in it was really peppy, had great interior, uh, good acceleration, quiet, comfortable, real easy to, uh, it was real natural to go into that vehicle. It wasn't like you had to learn a whole new system. A non-fuel a non -fuel cell driver could just jump in and start driving and feel really comfortable. And I think people would be really impressed if they really had the chance to, to get their hands and there's there get their seats in some of those bucket seats and start start driving these vehicles i know you just picked up a mariah how do you like it so far um i've got ten thousand miles on this mariah i drove it to vegas and back i drank the fuel cell water at the um uh at death valley if anybody wants to see the video it's right on my front page hydrogenhouseproject.org um but the the vehicle itself i love uh, I think I'm the only one in the world that's actually uh, is filling his vehicle from solar hydrogen I make three months of the year. Um, basically, this, this stuff is not as difficult as people make it out to be. I mean, I basically built my hydrogen refueling station on spare parts. You know, this is not rocket science. Hey, how much, how much uh, PV do you have in terms of kilowatts of PV? How, how much do you actually have in total? So I know you've got several different arrays. How much? Yeah, I have seven arrays and they total 27 kilowatts. 27 kilowatts. Okay. That's respectable. So that's, a, that's a decent amount of, that's a decent amount of solar. So and you, I can do pretty much anything I want to do. And you basically run them from what month to what, one, what month in New Jersey? Well, the house works on an energy cycle. So during the spring, I have no heat or air conditioning bills. So uh, I take that 27 kilowatts, I put it into my electrolyzer and I split water and hydrogen and oxygen and fill 12 1,000 gallon propane tanks. Once that's done, I'm done for the year. So I basically uh, back feed the grid the rest of the year. Uh, the house only uses two of the 27 kilowatts. The 25 
KW Solar goes back to the grid, and that happens till the end of September. From September to December, I'm neutral, which is batteries and solar, and then December, January, February, part of March, uh, the fuel cell runs anywhere from two to six hours a day, depending on whether the panels are covered or uh, what, the, what the sunlight conditions are at the time. So, and then it goes back to making hydrogen again, and the cycle starts all over again. I always make more hydrogen than I used the year before, so I'm always coming up with new ways of figuring out how to use it. Hence the lawnmowers, the motorcycles, the ATVs, uh, the weed whackers, all that stuff. Yeah. Hey, you have two vehicles. I know you actually hand-built a vehicle. Are you still driving that one, too? Yeah, I still have the New Jersey Genesis. Um uh, that's been with me now for about the past 10 years. It's the last AIV left, which is a aluminum intensive vehicle. It was uh, originally built from the Partnership for New Generation Vehicles uh, around the ni 1994 as uh, their all aluminum car. So yeah, it's, it's a real piece of history, so I'm trying to preserve it. But yeah. There's not any more left. You got the Smithsonian lined up for it? Well, they got the other one, they've got the Venturer, so. Okay. Yeah, but they don't have a, a Stritsky. They don't have a Stritsky original yet. <laughs> That's true. Well, somebody will be fighting over that when I'm gone. So out in California, are you seeing a lot of the uh, fuel cell vehicles now that you're out there? Um, they're gearing up for the next wave. More fueling stations are going in every day. Um, they've used the carbon tax to basically pay for another 200 stations. So hopefully within the next year and a half, we'll have 200 stations here, and a deal was cut with all the major automakers to put in another 200,000 cars. So now you're talking a real dent in both the infrastructure and, and the amount of vehicles out there. Now things are starting to get serious. Um, you know, we're looking at, like for the Nikola trucks, major, major players are stepping in now that are used to making things in very big quantities, which is going to drive the price down. So for Nikola, you're looking at Siemens and Bosch uh, partnering together to, you know, mass produce these trucks, the drive lines, the uh, wiring harnesses, the fuel cells, all of that stuff. So the mass production end of it is now the next part of bringing the cost down. And then advances in technology like we've seen with vapor deposition. Uh, non-noble metal catalysts and graphene, and, you know, better programming logic, better subcomponents, um, you know, higher energy densities. We're seeing all of this stuff. Right now, a 100-kilowatt fuel cell is the size of a suitcase. If yeah. you look at the one that's in the Mirai, it's under, your, it's under the driver's seat. Yeah, can you so imagine, you, you, can you imagine putting a, a V8, generator, a V8 engine mean, under, your, under your driver's seat? Say that one more time, please. Can you imagine having a, a V8, a you know, five liter V8 yeah. under your driver's seat? I don't think so. No, I can't. Just from the noise and the heat. Remember, yeah. the military loves to go to fuel cells because there's no heat signature. I know. I sold them on you that about either. five years ago. I, I they kept asking. I mean, they kept telling me they wanted to go battery, 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 and I said, why? They're you're you're missing you're missing some big points. Number one, the batteries cost too much to ship when you have to deploy, and number two. There's no heat signature, no noise, and you can run the vehicle, just squirt hydrogen in it when you need fuel, just like you do now, and not have to pull it offline and go charge it for six hours. So they caught on pretty quick. Yeah, I think that, yeah, the things that's coming up fast and heavy is, you know, landfill gas, uh, sewage treatment plants, uh, methane pig ponds and cow ponds. All of these things are very, anything organic is a rich source of hydrogen that can be used for fuel cells. Right. And a lot of it is already carbon that would already go out into the atmosphere. So you're gonna see more and more people tapping in to uh, naturally occurring forms of carbon. Since hydrogen is 80% of every molecule in the universe, you know, of all, I'm sorry, all matter in the universe, it, it's the most abundant fuel source. We're mostly water, you can make fuel from us. Exactly. So we're gonna see, this is why this is gonna win out of what we're doing. The batteries, they're not going to build an infrastructure nine times bigger or put that much copper in the ground. Yep. I mean, right now it buys oil another 10 years. And yep. we don't have 10 years. Hey, you were mentioning that um, about uh, 
Air Liquide and some of the companies putting in large liquid hydrogen plants. And one of them, I think you said it was going to be in Nevada, or I understand is in Nevada, probably part of Nikola Motors yeah. uh, system. Anyway, you drove your um, car from uh, LA to Nevada into to Vegas. Is Nevada and some of the neighboring states around California, are they starting to clue in and, and start to build hydrogen infrastructure? Are they starting to take it seriously now? Not quite yet, but soon. Like I said, it, it's kind of like, you know, you're watching what your neighbor does. And once your neighbor does it, you know, then you've got to do it. you got to keep up with the Joneses. Exactly. Yeah, I have you know, a, so a, a... It depends on what the, what the resource is. I mean, Arizona is a perfect place because of all the, the sunlight. It is. And they've got... Yeah. Uh, They've got uh, folks in, in Phoenix that uh, are regular hydrogen pioneers. Roy McAllister and a bunch of the guys down there that, uh, I think Roy's got 150 patents in hydrogen. And uh, they're, they Not certainly should be, should be watching that stuff and doing stuff. Anyway, we've got a, just the last minute. I want to leave it to you to kind of wrap up the last minute and uh, give us your picture of what's going on in, uh, in your world in hydrogen. I mean, in my world of hydrogen, I have a whole team of legislators showing up my house on March 23rd to get an education. It all starts with, you know, you have to let people know what's on the menu. By coming to my house, everything is full circle. You'll see where it starts and you'll see what it ends. You can't show somebody a dot in the circle and expect them to connect the rest of the dots. And in most cases, they can't be connected. So everything that we're building in our lives is called a system. So every piece has its job to do. And if you're missing that piece, the job doesn't get done. It wouldn't be a computer if it didn't have a monitor, a hard drive, a mouse, or a keyboard. So, you know, we have to show people that all the pieces fit, everything works together, and you know where things start and end, and they end up, they end in the right place. So education is key, mass production, voting with your checkbook. People are starting to do all of this stuff. Okay. And the new generation is taking over that cares about the planet, you know. Well, what's we your web? A mess and they what's, up. what's your website so people can go and look at some of your stuff? Uh, it's hydrogenhouseproject.org. Okay, hydrogenhouseproject.org, not .com. And uh, we put .com on the not screen, but it's com. .org. And um, there's a, a lot of other great things. It, I, it, I had... Tell your listeners they're... You can tell your listeners are more than welcome to vote with their checkbooks. Okay. Hit the donate button when they visit me. <laughs> okay. And uh, we had right. we had um, uh, Keith Malone from California Fuel Cell Partnerships on last week. And I just got my newsletter mm -hmm. from the Renewable Hydrogen Alliance. That's a great newsletter also. So events coming up. They've got the World Hydrogen Fuel Summit in Amsterdam from 10, uh, 10 and 11 March. So if you want to spend my birthday in Amsterdam, that would be a great thing to go to. <laughs> And also a Hydrogen Fuel Cell International Forum is happening in San Diego on February 26th and 27th. And the International Renewable Energy Storage Conference is in Mies, Germany, again, over my birthday. So a hey, lot of great things happening in March on the, on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. So look them up on the internet, get your airline tickets, and start participating in the H2 world. Right, Mike? That's it. Okay. They have hydrogen car now. All right. So you can go watch your NASCAR with fuel cell vehicles and electric vehicles. All right. Well, thanks, Mike, uh, for being with us. And until next week, Stan Energy Man is signing off. Aloha.